This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 120, Seven Common Causes and Proven Cures for Procrastination by Angel Sharonoff of markandangel.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hey, hey, welcome to Optimal Living Daily. This is the podcast where I read to you from the most amazing blogs on the planet to help you optimize your life. And I'm back today with one of the newest blogs to join OLD, and that is markandangel.com. I first read one of their posts last week in episode 113, so you can check that out to hear a little more about them. And I read a post by Mark last time, so I wanted to get Angel's side. And I found this great post on procrastination, which is something a few of you actually emailed me about. So I'm happy to be providing some tips to you on that. And usually right here, I would tell you a little something you can do for this show if you like it. But instead, I'm going to experiment a little and simply ask that you listen through the end of the show. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So let's hear from Angel for the first time and start optimizing your life. Seven Common Causes and Proven Cures for Procrastination by Angel Sharonoff of markandangel.com. Do you put off doing things that would bring you closer to your desired goals? I know I do. But why are we so foolish? It has something to do with how our daily responsibilities overwhelm us. In the midst of all the important things we know we need to do, we somehow convince ourselves that none of these things need to be done right now. In other words, we decide that some peace and relaxation in the short term is what's most important. So we take another break, read another blog post, watch another TV show, and just kick back and relax. And life is blissfully dandy for a little while. But then suddenly, the inevitable deadline has arrived. Ah, it's panic time. So here are seven common causes and proven cures for procrastination. I'm hoping these tips help you avoid that insane moment of panic. Number one, fear of the outcome. Sometimes we're afraid we'll fail. Sometimes we're subconsciously afraid we'll succeed and then we'd have to deal with all the disruption, growth, and change that follows success. And other times it's our fear of rejection or simply our fear of looking like a fool. The best way I've found to defeat fear is to stare it down. Connect to your fear, feel it in your body, realize it, and steadily address it. Greet it by name if you have to. Welcome, fear. If you are conscious of it, soon it becomes shy, hangs its head, and mooches off, scraping one shoe on the ground. Number two, helplessness in the face of complexity. We look at a task at hand and feel intensely unresourceful. It may remind us of something we had to do when we were younger before we had the skills to conquer it, even though that's no longer the case. Or it may actually be a daunting task at our current skill level. Either way, the task seems far too complex, so we try to avoid it. This time, the solution is to break it down. Take that complex task and break it down to its bare essential components and then tackle each one of those components one at a time. Sometimes it's also helpful to recall one of your previous successes with concrete a complex task just to get yourself in a positive mindset. Think of a time you were really on top of things, achieving great results when you were in the zone. Close your eyes and place yourself in that memory with all your senses. Number three, rebellion and laziness. We resent the task in front of us. We feel imposed upon. I have to do this, we think to ourselves, but I don't have to do it now. Rebellion is about control. We assert our control by choosing when or whether to do the task. A friend of mine whose homeschooled son is very rebellious came up with a clever hack. She said, quote, we're gonna do what kids who are in school do. You're going to sit and do schoolwork for eight hours a day, unquote. Her son rebelled, naturally. When the rebellion was in full effect, my friend offered an alternative. Quote, or we could do this homeschool style. If you finish early, we can go somewhere fun, unquote. And her son worked more productively than ever. So when you notice yourself feeling rebellious and lazy about a task, think of a way to reward yourself for getting it done now. Also, remind yourself of the consequences of not doing it. Number four, lack of motivation. I procrastinate doing my tax return. It's an administrative task and I don't like it, but it helps when I think about it this way. I'm due a refund this year. 
When I concentrate on the amount of money I get back versus the time it takes to do my taxes, it's an excellent hourly rate, and it motivates me to focus on getting it done. That by itself wasn't quite concrete enough though, so I promised myself a reward. Out of the refund, I would buy myself a kayak, something I'd been thinking about for a while to help me get back in shape. The basic principle is reframing. If you know the job has to be done but it's not emotionally important to you, find a way to make it important. If I was gonna be paying a penalty fee for turning my taxes in late, I could set aside the equivalent amount of the penalty for a reward, for example. What are you gonna get by doing this that's important enough to motivate you to do it now? Number five, lack of focus and fatigue. Distractions are everywhere. You must learn to ignore them. Minimize distractions by secluding yourself. Disconnect the internet and power off your cell phone if you have to. Check email and voicemail at set intervals instead of randomly every few minutes. Find a quiet space where you can concentrate on the task at hand and only take breaks as a reward for accomplishing smaller subtasks. Also, it's hard to focus when you're fatigued, so get enough sleep, eat healthy, and exercise regularly. Number six, not knowing where or how to start. Or maybe the task just looms in front of you as a big block, like a building with no doors. You walk around its perimeter, and you don't immediately see a way in. How do you get in? Where do you begin? You can't figure it out, so you set the task aside. I'm creating a course on procrastination. It started out as one of those buildings with no doors. How do I even start designing a course like that, I thought. Well, I wrote down a few reasons why people procrastinate, the starting point. I thought about reasons why you'd want to stop, the end point or goal. Once something has a beginning and an end, it's a lot easier to start seeing the middle. And usually you can work from both ends until you meet in the middle. Each of those reasons is a topic, and each of those topics has a start and an end, and so on and so forth. So don't give up. Uncover the starting and ending points and start filling in the blanks one at a time. Number seven, perfectionism. One of the best bits of advice ever about perfectionism comes from Melody Beatty's book, Codependent No More. It just doesn't matter, she says. It just doesn't matter. But that's hard advice to put into practice sometimes. I've often put off implementing ideas by using the excuse that I'm not yet prepared to do the idea justice. Some part of me thinks I'll end up wasting the idea by implementing it poorly at my current level of skill. But guess what? My current level of skill isn't going to increase unless I practice and I can't practice until I implement. And that means I have to implement with my current level of skill, make mistakes, learn from them, and press on. So in reality, not implementing that idea right now is the only true way to waste it. And guess what else? There are plenty of additional ideas and variations I haven't thought of yet, and most of them won't come to me until I've started implementing and making mistakes. It's impossible to steer a parked car. Conclusion. By taking the time and initiative to understand your own reasons for procrastinating and devoting a little energy to take the necessary steps to move forward, you can beat procrastination. We all can. In fact, simply writing this article was a testament to this. I kept procrastinating on writing it because I lacked focus. So I locked myself in my den, eliminated all distractions, kept the end in mind, and started writing. And as usual, starting was the hardest part. Now I'm done. For additional guidance on beating procrastination, I highly recommend The Now Habit, a strategic program for overcoming procrastination. You just listened to the post titled Seven Common Causes and Proven Cures for Procrastination by Angel Sharonoff of markandangel.com. I know many of you struggle with procrastination, so I hope that's helpful for you. And in the post, Angel said she was working on a course on procrastination, and they do have a live course on their site called Getting Back to Happy, which does cover procrastination, but also a lot of other stuff like pain and insecurity. So you can find that on their site as well. Again, that's markandangel.com. And I definitely have that issue with perfectionism. and something I'm working on and just hoping that you guys are cool with me making mistakes every once in a while. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to go crazy and edit every little thing. And on that note, if you want to be nice to me, If you do me the honor of visiting me online at oldpodcast.com and there, if you join my weekly newsletter, you get free gifts from me immediately. You'll hear from me personally every once in a while. Plus, you'll be entered to win a book every single month. It's really easy to join through oldpodcast.com or if you prefer the super quick way, you can text the word optimal to the number 44222. And I think that's enough for today. It's episode 120 
Have a happy Saturday, and I'll be back with Sivir Sunday tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.